All right, so I got my uh, my hole cut in my bucket here. Got a square hole because of this. You got to put the plug through it. And once again, it's the little Chinese flat bladed, no holes, generic plug that they send to the U.S. Um, so the way this works, though, you got your water inlet, connect to your pump, oh, and your pump lives down in your bucket. Um, and I've read about you can add antifreeze if you're in cold climates. You can uh, add algaecide, use Clorox, bleach to shock things dead. Um, but mostly it seems to be if you want to prevent algae from growing in your bucket or in your water system in general, you need to remove light, so have a closed bucket with opaque, opaque sides like this, or um, just add a lot of chemicals. And uh, I've, I've opted for the opaque bucket. It's cheap, three bucks, four bucks at Home Depot. And, um, and I'll just be using distilled water. Uh, maybe once in a while I'll add a little bit of bleach just to make sure things aren't growing in there. But other than that, this should be a pretty closed system. And uh, hopefully things won't grow in it. One of the other things uh, people mention about these water systems is uh, that your return line, so where the water goes back in, you're going to want to have that below the water line. And the idea behind that is to reduce the amount of air that you're introducing into your water. So you reduce the amount of air that you're letting in your water because algae and any little microorganisms that are going to grow in your water and muck it up, they also need dissolved oxygen. So removing that dissolved oxygen, like the oxygen I'm introducing right now, is uh, important for keeping your, your algae growth under control. And I've got six gallons here. I don't know if I'll need all six. I don't think the tube takes a whole gallon of water, but we'll find out. So right now there's that's four. So I'm going to try this out and just see what happens. Got my return line under the water line. I'll just close that a little bit right now. And I'm going to plug that in. And there goes our water. So let me see if I can get this out. Checking our laser tube. And there we go. We've got water going through. Take you off the tripod here. And the, uh, the air bubbles in there. And the best uh, advice on that is just to tip the machine because um, you're going to have air bubbles no matter what you do. And you're just going to want to let this run for a while then uh, tip your machine so that the air can go out uh, back into your reservoir. Let that run for a while, let the air bubbles purge. I think eventually I'll probably get a flow meter just so I can see, because you can't really hear it. It's underwater, it's under a lot of water and inside that sealed bucket, so it's um, it's pretty quiet. Let's see if you can get closer. You'll probably hear my 3D printer going more than this thing. So anyway, it's, uh, it's quiet, so a flow meter would be a good idea and a temperature gauge. I don't know if eventually, I mean it's pretty warm here in my garage. Um, this is going to keep things at the correct temperature or not. I don't know, find out. So the uh, the tipping method seems to work well. I mean the this machine is light enough where you can you can lift it up without any problems. Um, but you really do have to lift it up quite a way in order to uh, to get those air bubbles out. 
And so you really, they're gonna need to get over here. So I don't know if you can see, there's, there's one right there. So I tip it up and then back. And that seems to suck those things right out. And there we go. So they're still, uh, let's see it's gone, but the, um, those will probably show up every once in a while uh, as the, the bubbles get sucked in through the pump um, until we're out of bubbles. So I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on that, but I'll just let this run. And I plan on having this just plugged in. I don't know if you can see my uh, power strip over there. But that's going to be the power strip for this whole area. Um, when I'm not using the laser, I'll just flip that off. The power for the pump will go off. And when I want to use the laser or anything associated with it, I'll flip it on. That way the, uh, the power will always be to the pump and it'll always be circulating through the laser. Um, and I hope I don't need a chiller, but uh, people have said that lasers like it cooler, not freezing, but cooler. So we'll see uh, if that's required or not in my climate, which is, gets pretty warm in the summer. I thought that ambient temperature would be good um, to disperse the heat, but I did a test run, and I don't have the piece here, but it didn't seem very powerful. Um, then I read online about the, the cooling for these lasers, and they tend to be happy around 18 degrees Celsius. So I wanted to find a cooling solution, but one that wasn't super expensive, because you can buy those coolers, CW3000, CW5000, and they are hundreds of dollars. So I've already spent too much on this thing, as it is. Uh, anyway, I went on Craigslist, and I found somebody who had a um, water cooler. And water coolers have a compressor, like your refrigerator, and they've got lines, and they've got a, a coil. So let me move this thing out of the way. And in my bucket of water, now I have a coil of copper that is cooling the water down. So I'll, uh, I'll give you a shot of what ambient is. I'll just point this at the ground. 27.8. Now if I uh, shoot the inlet hose, so the water going to the, to the laser tube, 23.5. And that's uh, 74. So anyway, um, that's cooling the water down. And hopefully that will work a little better than ambient temperature. Because apparently higher temperatures reduce the lifespan of the laser tube and give you lower power, worse results. So I want to get the most power I can. I got this thing for 25 bucks. It had the water cooler exterior, but stripped it all off until I got just the radiator, compressor, and the coolant lines. And uh, you'll see right there is my thermostat, and it's got just a little screw on the back. If uh, the water gets too cold and causes the tube to condense, meaning we're uh, below the dew point, then I can just back off on the thermostat. Hopefully this will work out. I'll have to fix my bucket, cut a hole right about there to uh, allow space for those those to fit in while being able to close the bucket completely. So that's a, a nice addition, a cheap addition, and maybe one other people can, uh, can use. Wanted to show one thing with the cooling system because I wasn't really happy with my, my kind of makeshift weird setup there. So uh, one thing you'll notice, there's an extra hole on the machine now, and that is my flow meter. So I've got the pump going right now, and you can see water's flowing. Um, I improved the, the inlet and outlet. I changed out the tubing for some of this uh, thicker vinyl tubing, and insulated it there, all the way back to the bucket, insulated the top, insulated the sides like before, Got a little extra insulation there, because um, when this garage gets hot, um, it's going to need the extra insulation to keep in the, to keep the heat away, and let the, uh, the pump do its work. So, uh, there's the the inlet side. Water's going through there, through the tube, comes out, Whoa! 
and from the outlet side snakes up here to the flow meter and comes right back out to the go back to the bucket uh, there's a third plug there and you see I've got it plugged uh, right now but that's a spot that I'm going to use for a temperature gauge and then I'll just run those wires down through there and back up to the control panel so I got a little display of the temperature got my flow meter so uh, I know that's not really a safety thing but it would be a really nice thing if the laser had this kind of stuff to start with but you gotta install it